This is a serious and sober topic. Raj Singh is on the line with us. He's the director of law and policy with the Sikh Coalition. That's Sikh as in S-I-K-H uh, coalition, SikhCoalition.org. Raj, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, for people who don't know what a Sikh is, would you like to uh, give us a, a quick definition? Uh, sure. A Sikh is a follower of the Sikh religion. Uh, it's a religion that was founded over five centuries ago in South Asia. Uh, Sikhs are distinguished by turbans and uncut hair. Uh, and the Sikh religion is the fifth largest uh, world religion. Wow, the fifth largest. I did not realize that. I, 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 I see a lot of Sikhs. And, 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 and uh, I, interestingly... I used to live in Portland. I used to fly through the Portland airport, and there was a fellow who was a TSA agent there who was a Sikh. And I had lunch with him one day, in fact. A very nice guy. Uh, it didn't occur to me at that time that being a Sikh might cause problems with the TSA. I guess probably because this guy was a TSA agent, you know, complete with turban. Um, but that's not quite how it's worked out. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the post-9-11 environment, uh, Sikhs have been subjected to violence and discrimination uh, in the form of hate crimes, school bullying, employment discrimination, and also racial and religious profiling. And um, racial and religious profiling uh, tends to happen most often in the context of uh, airports at TSA screening checkpoints. Uh, unfortunately, Sikhs uh, seem to be set aside for random uh, secondary screening uh, 100% of the time at some airports. Obviously, hmm. there's nothing random about that. Hmm. That's interesting. I, uh, I got one of those. I've, I just finished a book tour, and I went through, I don't know, eight or ten airports in the last week and a half and got pulled aside twice for, quote, random screenings. And um, But, you know, I'm an old white guy, you know, so I, I, other than the fact that I, I usually – you know, look like I haven't shaved in three days. I'm, I'm not sure that I set off any flags. You're wearing a turban. And um, to somebody who doesn't have any religious sophistication, they might not be able to differentiate that from somebody who's Muslim. Is, do you think that's what's going on? I think what's happened is that in the post-9-11 environment, uh, the prevailing stereotype is that if somebody wears a turban and has a beard, uh, they're associated with Osama bin Laden, who, of course... Uh, unfortunately, wore a turban and had a beard. So I think right. it's really that that's explaining a lot of these problems. Yeah. So it's even it's even more fundamental and basic than people can't tell the difference between uh, uh, Sikhism. What's a, how, how do you say it? Sikh. Yes, it's actually Sikhism. So okay, Sikhism. Uh, the Sikhism is a variation of Hinduism, is it not? No, it is not, sir. Uh, it is an independent religion, distinct uh, from Hinduism and Islam. Uh, uh -huh. Essentially, Sikhs believe in one God uh, and believe that all people are equal. There is uh, no caste system in Sikhism, and there's also no belief in religious exclusivity. So uh, as far as Sikhs are concerned, it doesn't matter what your religious label is. Uh, what matters ultimately is the content of your character. But, okay, so, but it came out of the, that, that, uh, uh, that region of southern central asia did it not yeah the, the punjab region of, yeah. of south asia that's okay. correct all right forgive my my ignorance i i really appreciate your educating me on this um so one of the cool things that you guys have done is come up with an app so that you can help educate the tsa about their agents who might not be shall we say behaving appropriately uh, that's right. Uh, we have launched an app, which is free. It's downloadable on iPhones and Androids. Uh, it's called Fly Rights. And what Fly Right? Is, yeah, Fly Rights. Mm -hmm. And we actually have a 2.0 version of the app. We first launched it last year. And essentially what it does is allow any traveler to file an official complaint of mistreatment or discrimination against the TSA. Uh, what's different about the 2.0 version, which we just launched today, is that for the first time, uh, travelers can send their complaints to their members of Congress automatically. Whoa. Whoa. And, and what kind of... And, and you don't have to be a Sikh to use this, I'm assuming. Uh, that's correct. Uh, about half of the users of FlyRights in the last year 
uh, filed on the basis of uh, discrimination uh, with respect to race, national origin, gender, and disability status. So it's not uh, exclusively for sick travelers. It's designed to be used by anybody. Yeah. And you said sick tra- So I'm mispronouncing the name of your religion. It's sick, not seek. That's right. It's um, sick. Uh, the K and the H are kind of uh, aspirated. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the points I want to underscore about this app is that uh, over the course of the last year, we've been collecting statistics. Mm-hmm. And what's sad and unfortunate is that there's a significant gap between what DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, uh, is reporting to Congress Mm -hmm. uh, in this context, and what we have learned uh, through data collection with the app. Uh, In 2012, DHS told Congress and the American people that it only received eight complaints, uh, just eight complaints of uh, TSA-related discrimination uh, at American airports nationwide. Um, we registered and documented 157 complaints, which were sent to DHS, by the way. So it's going to be interesting to see how DHS reconciles uh, the difference the next time it makes a report to Congress. That's very interesting. Um, my experience of TSA agents has been, with with one single exception of, of uh, somebody who was just, you know, probably should never be given a badge and authority, has been, by and large, positive is that but you said that six are a hundred percent being pulled out and 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 profiled is this a a this has to it has to feel terrible i mean can you describe that experience for me uh sure it's um uh, quite stigmatizing what happens is if you go through a body scanner or a metal detector and you don't set off an alarm. Uh, if you wear a religious head covering, the official policy is that you could be set aside for random secondary screening uh, at the discretion of a screener. Uh, and so as a Sikh who wears a turban, if you go through a body scanner or a metal detector and don't set off an alarm, uh, you should expect to be set aside for secondary screening no more or less often than any other traveler. Mm. But in practice, what we're finding is that uh, this discretion is being abused by the TSA at many airports, and six are being set aside for secondary screening 100% of the time, and that is uh, suggestive of profiling. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's not just six. Uh, In the last two, three years, uh, there have been credible reports of racial profiling um, affecting uh, Hispanic travelers, uh, African-American travelers at airports in Hawaii, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And so this is... uh, uh, not exclusively a sick uh, problem. It, it may be suggestive of a deeper problem at the TSA with respect to profiling. With respect to persons of color as well. 